We are live. Uh, hi everyone, today is May 19th and after a short break we continue um, uh, the Google Summer of Code office hours. Just to explain what happened uh, during the months, uh, there is these mentors of community who are working on selecting projects, uh, selecting number of project slots, making final decisions, um, etc. And on May 17th, uh, Google has finally announced uh, the accepted projects. So yeah, for students and for the community it was like one month of radio silence. For mentors and org admins, uh, not so much because there was a lot of discussions and thanks to everyone. So finally, we were able uh, to announce the projects uh, in the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And yeah, the list of accepted projects is here. So we will have a project for cloud events, for uh, credentials for Jenkins Remote Monitoring, for security related for Kubernetes Operator and for smart versioning. So uh, thanks to everyone who participated um, in uh, um, uh, this um, in the application phase. We received um, several dozens of proposals. There were many great proposals, and unfortunately, we were unable to accept all of them like it happens with everywhere uh, is every year so before we start i just want to thank everyone who applied who engaged with the jenkins community during the application phase uh, because yeah, it's really important that we don't take for granted uh, the time you invest um, and we appreciate uh, all your contributions and uh, participation in the jenkins community which today we will talk about what's next and what you can do because yeah, this is the end of JSOC. It doesn't mean that uh, it has to be the end of your participation in the community. There are other programs, etc. And if anyone is interested on the call, we will talk about that. And yeah, uh, what else? Um, yeah, and of course, uh, congrats um, to the accepted students. So please welcome Shruti, Harshit, Akih, uh, uh, and Aditya to the Jenkins community. And yeah, if I pronounce the names incorrectly, please let me know because yeah, we will uh, adjust, but yeah, it may be uh, difficult to uh, vision there. So yeah, thanks a lot for your time and it's great to see you in the Jenkins community. So we will have three weeks of community bonding and after that we will have two coding phases. So as we discussed in previous meetings, uh, the JSOC program this year is a bit different from the previous years. It's more relaxed in terms of time because uh, students do not work full time. They work only 20 hours approximately. Um, and there will be two evaluation periods instead of three, like it used to be since 2017. So, but still it's Google Summer of Code uh, and we are looking forward uh, to it. And uh, as you may see this year, we have a number of uh, projects which are really important from the community standpoint, from the Jenkins future standpoint. Uh, three of these projects are tightly related to uh, Jenkins and the cloud, uh, including cloud events, uh, uh, Jenkins remote monitoring, this Prometheus, and also security for validated for Jenkins Kubernetes operator. So these are topics which are on our roadmap. Um, they might not be on uh, the Jenkins IO public roadmap because uh, we need uh, to update that. Uh, but yeah, all uh, projects um, will be here. And yeah, all projects uh, we consider that um, uh, very important. So this document will be updated maybe within a few days, if this time allows. And uh, yeah, also regarding other projects. So uh, Adidas project for semantic versioning uh, plugin is important uh, in terms of uh, software delivery lifecycle and security delivery pipelines because there is JEP 229 focused on continuous delivery of Jenkins plugins and uh, proper versioning is essential for that so that uh, it is convenient for users. And uh, this project is tightly aligned with our goals um, in this area and with uh, the discussions we had at the previous contributor summit for security and uh, Jenkins delivery pipelines. And the last but not least, uh, Git uh, credential binary project. So, well, Git credential, Git plugin is used by pretty much every Jenkins instance in the world, with uh, some exceptions. And yeah, it's a core functionality of Jenkins, even it's located in the plugin. And yeah, it's also very important uh, to have a Git plugin evolving. And yeah, all secrets management, credentials management, again, is tightly related to security these days. And it's, it's uh, very important to Jenkins users. So all these projects are very important and uh, we thank 
uh, we are happy to see uh, this list. Of course, we would uh, prefer to see more projects. This year, we've got only six slots. So we've been able to accept uh, all uh, projects and we can talk about it later. Um, and yeah, the continuous delivery foundation, there is another project uh, in Spinnaker, which is about five Spinnaker IO. So Daniel Cole will be working on that. So yeah, of course, domain doesn't exist because it's not URL yet. So basically, they are trying to create um, a way to try out Spinnaker um, quickly um, and see how it works. And last year, we had a project by Slade and Nunes about uh, um, custom Jenkins uh, distribution service, which allowed to quickly build custom configurations of Jenkins. And maybe try Jenkins IO could be also a good uh, topic uh, for the next projects, whether it's GSOC or not. So it's great to see that Spinnaker community is working on that. So these are current projects. Um, before we continue, are there any questions, comments from our students and mentors? Yeah, so if you want to come in, just unmute yourself and uh, I'll basically tell whatever you want. Maybe a recording, but uh, yeah, it's a free meeting, so everyone is welcome to participate. Okay, so if no questions, let's continue. And yeah, the, the next steps. So there are a few action items for Cadmins. So we will be contacting uh, all the rejected students. Uh, I announced that we would be doing it within 24 hours. So this deadline has already passed, but uh, several students still haven't received the feedback. I cordially apologize for that. Uh, there were some events, which uh, yeah, that's why we didn't have so many people on the call today. Uh, but uh, yeah, all of you will get feedback. Uh, we have collected feedback from all mentors. It's being processed by all admins, and we will be definitely contacted if you haven't uh, received the feedback yet. So we also work uh, with um, other org admins and with other community members to see whether we could accommodate uh, projects in other ways. So again, we received uh, less projects so than we wanted. Um, but um, yeah, we, for particular projects and for particular students, we will look for alternatives. And again, we will contact you. So we are currently looking at whether we could fund the projects, so whether you could find mentors, either during the summer time frame or during the autumn time frame. And if you're interested, please reach out to us so we'll see what options we have. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, what's next? I hope that all students have been already contacted uh, by uh, their mentors. If not, uh, please let us know, uh, because uh, we hope that uh, teams start working uh, soon, because your yeah, community bonding is three weeks, but it's just three weeks. Even community bonding, there are multiple topics to address and work on. So it's not just getting introduced to the mentors, but it's actually being introduced to the community. And uh, our objective for the community bonding and to ensure that uh, when the coding, first day of the coding phase starts, we actually, you actually know what to do, you know how to do that, and you can basically start coding from uh, day one. For that, uh, maybe you have seen the student guidelines. So there are actually student and mentor guidelines uh, on our website. And these uh, guidelines also describe what is expected during uh, the community bonding phase. So if you haven't read uh, this document, please do. And uh, for example, for students, um, there are a few topics uh, defined. And just to highlight the process in the Jenkins community and in GSOC uh, in general, we expect students to drive the projects. Mentors provide advice, provide assistance, the expertise. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, these are students leading the project, and students are expected uh, to collaborate, communicate, and drive activities. And if you need any assistance, we are here to help. So community work is not only about writing code and we expect you to operate on high level because it's a good experience for you. It will be definitely be helpful going forward and we are here to help. So during community bonding, what we expect teams to do. So teams consist of a student who is a project lead basically and well, the lead implementer of course, 
uh, and also several mentors. You know, we have at least three mentors uh, in every project at the moment. There might be additional contributors joining later or maybe leaving, it also happens. Um, but yeah, the key objective for this team uh, is to actually get ready to the coding phase. There are multiple items. So you will see these items on the screen. I will go through them quickly. So define the communication channels. So we recommend that you have a chat you can see that we set up a GitHub chat. Actually, this year, so GitHub is also some, is something I would recommend for a chat, but you also have an option to use Slack. So we have a continuous delivery foundation Slack and um, it's PM. So if you want to join, so there was a question of whether I have to be a member of OpSumX to join, no. So the problem with that is that uh, the guidelines on the continuous delivery foundation site are dated, uh, but for us, uh, there is another guide here. So continuous delivery foundation, if you go to Jenkins IO slash chat page, here you can see that uh, there is joint CDF Slack here, and this link uh, works for an email. And if your team uh, decides um, to uh, use um, a chat, uh, one thing to keep in mind that um, CDF Slack uh, has free account. What it means is that it's limited to something like 10,000 or 20,000 messages across the entire Slack workspace. And this amount of messages currently will unlikely last you through the GSOC program. So it means that if you want to have conversation history during the entire GSOC, having a Slack channel is not enough. Uh, but you can uh, choose it as an option. And we highly recommend that you keep good meeting notes in that case. Okay, and for Gitter, uh, have everyone seen Gitter? Yes. Okay, so, so basically, if you go to GSOC, um, the most of project ideas, uh, GSOC 2021 project ideas, um, if you go there, you can see that, uh, well, this is what they cloud events. So for cloud events, you can see that there are a few links here, that uh, there is a link to a chat. In Gitter, there is a link to mailing list and there is a list uh, link to meetings because this project um, participates on the umbrella of Cloud Native Seed, which is not surprising. Headways taking the name, and yeah, here um, so we have a chat, we have mailing list, and we have um, regular meetings, which points to GSOC apparently. But yeah, actually, uh, the team has uh, meetings um, every Friday. So it's just a mess in the metadata here because yeah, we'll get it fixed. Uh, but what I wanted to say to the teams that the links you had in project ideas were the links for initial discussion and application phase. Going forward, the teams uh, have opportunity to decide how they iterate. So basically you, uh, mentors, and uh, whatever community you have around the project, like stakeholders, interested people, you are fully free to choose what communication channel you, you use, whether it's Gitter, whether it's Slack, or you may decide to use something else. Um, it's up to you. Um, so our expectation is that uh, projects are community projects. So what it means is that, uh, um, well, basically you participate as a part of wider community, not just as a small team. And uh, yeah, if you get, want to get full experience of open source, this is how you should participate. So not just uh, working in a small team, but actually reaching out to the community, to potential users, getting feedback, collaborating where it's possible, because yeah, your main goal in this project not to deliver the task. Uh, your main goal is to actually study something, learn how open source community works, improve your skills, including technical skills, soft skills, and uh, to have some experience. And it's not only related to students, same for mentors. All of us learn together when working on JSOC. Uh, I learned a lot uh, when mentoring students over the past years. And uh, yeah, please make sure to make it your priority. And of course, if we deliver some code, uh, it's nice. Um, and yeah, it's probably a, a criteria for final um, completion of the project and for successful evaluation. But uh, yeah, it's not the main goal for you as a participant. The main goal is to actually study. And uh, yeah, uh, please focus on that together with uh, mentorship teams. Okay, do you still follow me? 
Or, yes. Do, yeah. Do you have any questions before we proceed? Okay, so again, communication channels. So chat we discussed, mailing list is optional because uh, we already have public uh, GSOC mailing list. Um, you can use this mailing list for, let's say, top level conversations for internal team announcements, etc. For technical conversations, uh, we have other mailing lists. So for example, if you want to ask about Jenkins development, the best way is to go to Jenkins CI dev because there is no point uh, to just ask your team in the mailing list if you can ask why the Jenkins community. Uh, and you can see that there is a lot of topics. Uh, actually, our developer mailing list is a mix of open governance and development. Uh, it's due to historical reasons. Uh, for now, we intend uh, to keep it like that. But if you have any question about development, just drop it into the mailing list and we can discuss. Same, for example, uh, if you want to discuss something specific to SIP, to interoperability, you can go to Cloud Native SIP um, and ask there. It's a mailing list, or there is also a CDF mailing list uh, for interoperability between projects. So you can use these channels. So historically, our projects do not create mailing lists, but if you decide to do so, you can totally do that. Another communication channel we ask teams to establish is weekly meetings. So we ask all mentors and students uh, to have um, a first meeting as soon as possible. Uh, and to, the main objective is to define communication channels. So during the coding phase, we recommend having two meetings per week. At least it was a recommendation for full-time GSOC when students were working for 40 uh, hours per week. Now with 20 hours, yeah, please discuss it uh, with the teams how we want to organize and uh, yeah, how you will organize the work because some students uh, may want to work just full time for one phase. Some students may want to uh, work for two phases. So uh, discuss it with the teams, uh, but we expect at least weekly meetings uh, between uh, team members because uh, they have been proven to be very efficient in terms of communication and uh, experience sharing. So don't use these meetings for status updates. Status updates can be done asynchronously in the chat. Uh, use these meetings for knowledge transfers, discussions, uh, again, studying together, discussing things, discussing obstacles, and unboarding each other. But uh, as much as this, if you can uh, keep the communications asynchronous, that's great. But uh, having this meeting is still nice, even if it's 15 minutes or 10 minutes if everything is okay. Okay. Moving on. So yeah, the next uh, topic we expect here in community bonding is getting introduced to key stakeholders and contributors. Again, uh, it's not just about uh, your team. Uh, many uh, other projects have communities uh, already. So for example, uh, if you talk about, uh, just a second. So if you talk about um, uh, cloud events, um, well, like, Probably to this example too often, but yeah, there is cloud native seed uh, with many people participating uh, here and there with active chats. Uh, if you talk about um, uh, Jinx Kubernetes separator, then uh, there is uh, even a separate Slack workspace on the virtual Schlab where there are ongoing discussions. I'm not sure whether the team will decide to use this workspace or maybe not. Actually, uh, when I was uh, thinking about that, uh, I was sort of wondering whether this workspace, whether this channel should be moved elsewhere. But yeah, it's totally up to the team. Uh, so same, for example, for semantic version, it's like the Jenkins infrastructure subproject because again, the, there is an active community and we're interested uh, to have it done. Uh, for remoting, yeah, we have remoting subproject, we have Jenkins core, uh, we have again cloud native seed. For Git credentials, I believe that Mark will use platform SIP um, as a base for this project. And for what was left, well, yeah, we discussed everything I believe. So, but again, uh, you define the channels, and I highly recommend to start reaching out to the wider community earlier because all these projects have significant community value. There are many potential users in the Jenkins community. And there are many ways to how you can uh, reach out. Firstly, join uh, SIEF meetings, join project meetings, 
or you can um, just send an email uh, to the developer management list, for example, or to your seat, and for example, uh, just do quick self-introduction and uh, project introduction. Um, another way uh, to communicate is actually writing an info blog post. If you already have a good proposal uh, with a lot of details, and yeah, all of you have such kind of proposal, so you can uh, already use community bonding time to write a small blog and uh, to speak about uh, your experience, about your plans, which is the main focus, not uh, to build community around your project because uh, more stakeholders you have, more feedback you get and more opportunities for learning you have during the communication. So my recommendation during community bonding is really go outside your team and uh, to have, have communications with more people. Any questions? Any comments? So, Jeff, Liphav, as experienced mentors, would you like to add something about that? Good. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm. I'm not the one who has experience here in GSOC. Uh, okay. Jeff is the one who has. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, Jeff, it'll be better if you start on this one. Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, sorry, what was the question, Oleg? Uh, yeah, so would you like to add something about the community bonding before we proceed? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that the, the important thing is to just kind of get to know the, the mentors a little bit, um, get, get some code out there. Um, maybe get, get some stuff reviewed and kind of just sort of get, get the conversation going. Um, make, make sure that you're comfortable with, um, with, with the repo and, and submitting pull requests and kind of, kind of get, get the whole process going. Um, then when, when we're ready to start coding, um, we're, we're, you know, everything's ready to go. We know, everybody knows what to do, um, how to make sure that the code gets reviewed, just kind of how the whole process works. Yeah, so establish rules of engagement, I think. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Thanks, so like. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, also knowledge transfers that Jeff mentioned. You know, and maybe figure out which which modes of communication work work best? Um, mm -hmm. as, as Oleg said earlier, uh, the mentors um, have have full time jobs. Um, you know, we're all in different time zones, and and so like, like I know I, I haven't in the past been really great about keeping up on on Gitter. Um, if if we choose to use Gitter for our project, I'll I'll try. But I think during you know, during the process of of just trying to get some some code going we might find out which which things work best for our particular project yeah uh, so yeah it's actually a problem for wider communities um, so there are commonly two types of communication uh, asynchronous communications like mailing lists and uh, uh, real-time live communications like charts etc and although in the Jenkins community, like in many other communities, we recommend to use asynchronous communications as much as possible because everyone is in different time zones. Uh, it's normal to have something like 24 hours uh, response delay uh, or so. Uh, de facto, uh, the most of the teams use real-time communications like chat. Um, it kind of approved uh, these tools like Slack where you can have threads where you can uh, actually recover these threads asynchronously. Uh, but yeah, I mean, think about it uh, carefully. And if there is an opportunity to move communications to asynchronous, it might be better for everyone. Because yeah, even students, um, yeah, th this is one of the reasons why uh, GSOC is more flexible this year with 20 hours uh, per week uh, expectation. So that uh, everyone can be more flexible uh, with the current uh, yeah, crazy times, I think it's important. Okay, you have, would you like to add something or Bartek? Yeah, uh, so uh, considering this project is also uh, about cloud events. So um, 
hence we were thinking maybe CDF Slack would be a better better place because a lot of the stuff that is going on in the event sec uh, in CDF mm -hmm. it will slowly start uh, catching up with uh, the cloud events plugin. So, uh, based so based on all these factors, it's it's important to understand like who what kind of projects would also be stakeholders in in the long run. So in yeah. terms of cloud events plugin, it would be um, cloud events and eventing. Yeah, for cloud events, actually, the situation is even more interesting because cloud events is a clear interoperability project because it's not like you work just inside Jenkins in the, with the Jenkins community, but uh, cloud events is also open source project. Uh, cloud events is actually quite active open source project and it has its own community. For example, yeah, let's see. There are various contributor guidelines, uh, they have their own governance, code of conduct, uh, they have this GitHub, Twitter, etc., etc. And they likely have their own chats, I believe, within the Kubernetes workspace, or maybe not. Uh, but yeah, one thing you could think about as a team is, for example, reaching out to this cloud events community, uh, seeing whether somebody would be interested in participating. And, I believe that in cloud events, they also use Jenkins a lot, uh, multiple com community members. So it might be a good opportunity for you to reach out and uh, to think whether uh, there could be some collaboration where you can add mentors from this community. Or maybe you can even decide that, uh, okay, we go and we create our channel within the cloud events community because it's better for collaboration. You can make a decision like that. Uh, yeah. It's up to you and to the team. And uh, yeah, I know that for students it might be quite difficult to operate on these levels uh, because uh, yeah, it requires significant open source uh, expertise. But the top three mentors, uh, my, uh, almost all mentors, uh, have a lot of expertise in the open source communities, not only just in Jenkins. And uh, yeah, please use this expertise so that uh, mentors can help you how organize and can help. Uh, guiding you and uh, all mentors have a lot of context here and there, so they might be able to assist when needed. Okay. So uh, Mauricio, who is another mentor on this plugin is not present today, but he is uh, he, he's one of the experts on cloud events. So through, through him, we'll be getting a lot of knowledge on a lot of other stuff uh, that we can do uh, once we reach like a level where the plugin can be uh, can like you can start using the plugin yeah right and uh, yeah it also applies to other communities so for example for git credentials git is open source project um, actually Git used to participate in google summer of code they didn't participate this year but yeah there are mentors to whom you could reach out uh, well I, and i met a few mentors i can help there for jenkins remote if it's prometheus community for example they might be interested or there is open telemetry activity, open telemetry community actively growing. And uh, there was an open telemetry plugin created by Elastic recently for Jenkins. And again, it's a window of opportunity because we can use one of uh, these contexts and then grow outreach, get more feedback and see how it works. Uh, maybe not even during the first coding phase, but yeah, again, you have three months uh, so that you can uh, with the team to evolve your communication based on how the project evolves. So for Jenkins Kubernetes operator, yeah, operators have a huge community, so why not? Uh, and uh, this is also a topic where you can talk, for example, with Jenkins X community, because Jenkins X community also operates in the uh, cloud native domain, and Kubernetes domain. They also use the operators a lot, and, uh, yeah, and uh, there might be a lot of opportunities for experience sharing. Semantic version. Uh, yes, it's also Jenkins community. Again, it's Jenkins X community because Jenkins X had semantic version plugin uh, for Jenkins X. So yeah, Garrett Evans uh, actually was one of contributors and Garrett Evans is a mentor in this project. So you uh, automatically get connected to the Jenkins X community and use this plugin. Okay. Sorry for this detour, but yeah, again, uh, this is a kind of free conversation. So Okay, so yeah, what else? Um, so continue to discuss and plan the project. So this is an important point. 
because what you made uh, during the application is a project proposal. And we reviewed this proposal, so we made a decision, uh, but not all proposals uh, uh, actually can happen as is. For example, uh, they might be too ambitious in terms of timing, uh, they might be too ambitious in terms of deliverables. Uh, or after the discussion with mentors, you may choose different architecture, different approach. It's totally possible. And we had cases like that before, but you as uh, the team, you're fully free to decide what you, how you address it. So the deliverable, the deliverables you defined in your original proposal, they're not slated in the stone. And as a team, you can discuss what you do, how you adjust based on how the project progresses, etc. And uh, our main uh, uh, criteria for uh, evaluating students is actually how they progress, whether uh, well, uh, whether the plan works, whether the experience of mentors is great. And as long as the experience of mentors is uh, great, we do not really care about what was delivered or not. It might be, of course, a different situation if, for example, due to whatever unfortunate reasons we have escalated to work admins or maybe even to the Google. Uh, in the case of negative evaluation, for example, things like that happens. Uh, we can discuss it later because it hasn't happened in the Jenkins community yet, but uh, I was involved in other communities where we had these escalations and discussions. Uh, but yeah, if you want, we can uh, continue. And right now, let's uh, focus on positive side. And yeah, the positive side is you have an opportunity to adjust during uh, the community bonding. Uh, use this opportunity. And uh, if there are major changes, major discoveries during the implementation, again, you can adjust. Uh, for example, uh, there was a project where mentors and students uh, did prototyping during the first phase. And they realized that uh, the project is just unfeasible, not implementable due to things related to, to the student. And uh, they basically chose another direction. It wasn't in Jenkins. But in Jenkins, we adjust projects a lot. Uh, so don't hesitate to do that. And again, the students as leaders, uh, they are basically eligible to make the final call. So mentors provide advice, provide inputs. Uh, but uh, it's up to the students to make the final call if uh, there is a disagreement, etc. Does it work for everyone? So yeah, there is a lot of text there, but yeah, again, take a look at this page later. So then uh, important uh, topic, set up your development environment, computers, etc. And uh, for, to for projects which require uh, cloud access, also uh, think about your environment. What it means that if you need something specific, for example, with Kubernetes cluster for cloud events, for Jenkins operator, or if you need uh, other environment, uh, talk about uh, it with mentors earlier, because we as a project do not expect you to pay for this environment uh, on your own if you need it. We as a project uh, will do our best to provide assistance, but uh, to do that, we need to know about it earlier. Because yeah, we have budgets, sometimes we also have to create accounts, sometimes uh, there is a lot of various bureaucracy involved. So together with teams, with community bonding, please talk about what you need. If you need something from the Jenkins project, from the Jenkins organization, please let me or Kara or other of admins know, and we will do our best to provide it. Um, and yeah. Uh, so again, the goal is to be ready uh, to start on uh, day first. So for example, if you need a repository within the Jenkins CI organization with permissions, uh, let's create it uh, during community bonding. If you need uh, infrastructure, let's like get access. If you need specific licenses, hopefully not, because yeah, I believe that everything we do is, can be do, done with open source, but uh, just in case all these topics, let, uh, let's resolve them earlier. Questions? No questions. So yeah, uh, learn and discuss the process with mentors. We discussed it. It's uh, basically a rules of engagement um, uh, we have mentioned. Uh, we use Jira to track GSOC tasks. 
So this part is dated as well. I will remove or replace that. Um, uh, over the previous year, we adopted uh, GitHub issues in many projects. We officially opened the cloud gates. So for example, if you go to Jenkins Kubernetes Security, uh, if you go to many other plugins like configuration as code, they use GitHub issues. And at this point, uh, there is no sense to enforce any particular uh, task tracker. What we ask for is a Jenkins community that for your own benefits, please create tasks, please track them, because you it helps uh, you to stay on track. And well, many teams uh, do it uh, in production. Uh, many teams uh, do it together. It's up to you. You can decide uh, that you follow Scrum, you can follow Kanban, you can uh, just do whatever works for you as a team. Uh, but yeah, my recommendation is still keep track of the tasks because it's helpful for you. Uh, because you can agree, you using the tasks, you can agree on the definition of done. Because how we usually approach in the Jenkins project and in Cloud this as well, that the yeah, definition of done is not just you roll some code, but it means that this code is delivered, uh, this code has test coverage, this code has appropriate documentation, etc. And our approach again, not working in a parallel branch for months, and merging at the last day of JSOC, we recommend, well, continuous integration because we talk about Jenkins. So uh, try to break down your tasks uh, to small items, uh, talk about the criteria for them and the common pattern uh, with your mentors and try to deliver as often as possible. Uh, so for example, you have a feature to it, if it fits in the same notebook request, even if it's one line documentation fix or if it's something like 100 lines, Etc. it's fine. Please try to avoid big uh, pull requests because they are hard to review, they are hard to deliver, and uh, they are also hard to integrate. Uh, we want uh, you to integrate often uh, and uh, again, talk to your mentors about uh, how to establish this process. And for example, in my case, yeah, I also have a dashboard for Jenkins community, for example, physical one, uh, because yeah, my memory is quite better at the moment, uh, but yeah, just why not? Uh, this, uh, so I see that uh, Kubernetes Operator has a project there. So yeah, maybe it's not the best example, but uh, yeah, if you want, you can create both like that within GitHub issues or with, uh, within Jenkins Jira. And uh, as a team, you just decide to what approach you want. So you have freedom of how you define that. And our main ask is that it's public so that uh, you can onboard contributors uh, and uh, org admins have access to that if something is needed from us. Uh, but how you implement that, how you proceed, is totally up to you. Then, yeah, just try out some uh, industry practices because, again, you study here. So, if you want to try agile development, etc., and the vendors up to that, why not? Okay, questions? Okay, and the last part uh, for community bonding is actually knowledge transfers. So again, uh, being able to start earlier. So we, if there are specific domains uh, you want to discuss with the team, so for example, for cloud events plugins, uh, it would be reasonable if Mauricio uh, does uh, introduction to cloud events, and we can also do it uh, for uh, the entire Jenkins community, because why not? Again, uh, if you can go to wider community, do it if it doesn't slow you down. Um, and uh, yeah, for other projects, if you need specific knowledge transfers, uh, talk to your mentors. Uh, as well, means we're also happy to organize sessions on demand. So in previous years, we used to do sessions like uh, how to develop a Jenkins plugin, etc. All these sessions are recorded by now. I can share links if you need. Um, and if you need something specific or if you need us to repeat one of these sessions live because you have some questions, let, uh, let us know. So again, it can be just uh, your team. If something specific, you can use one of uh, your meetings for, let's say, uh, knowledge transfer for pay coding, which is also a really great technique to get started uh, and consider it. Um, or why not? Um, so something like that, uh, if you need any knowledge transfers, let us know. Uh, so what else we have regarding the next weeks and uh, the community bonding phase? Um, so yeah, we have this office hours, 
will have this office hours uh, to have organizational level questions and discussions. Uh, we do not really use them for project discussions. These meetings are optional. So if you have any questions, please free to join. Uh, I will likely start a doodle poll so that we can choose a new time for meetings if this time is not comfortable uh, for students, for mentors, or we can have se sessions in different time zones depending on the interest. Uh, but yeah, this meeting is optional. And do not use this meeting for asking uh, questions. Do not wait for this meeting because, uh, for example, you can ask your team or you can ask uh, yeah, again in the GitHub channel for JSOC. So no need to wait for this meeting if you have a key question. Uh, just ask right away. Our main objective as mentors or as our admins is to ensure that you don't have blockers and that you don't have anything delaying you. So we will try to help where we can. So we can use these meetings for any kind of ad hoc discussions, demos if you want to show something or share your experiences. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Okay. What else? Yeah, I sent a request uh, that um, all students submit pull requests uh, uh, for uh, project pages. So you can see that here there are projects from 2020. They will be the same list for 2021 soon. And here you can see that uh, there are links uh, to students. So why it's helpful? Because it helps uh, to quickly navigate through content, through history, etc. There are also profile pages. And we ask uh, all students and eventually all mentors to fill in these uh, profile pages so that uh, we can easily, easily ask you to the list. So here you can see uh, three roles, students, mentors, advisors. So advisors are basically non-mentors, but uh, people who contribute to the project as stakeholders sometimes help. And well, if you want to introduce more roles in your projects, please do so. Uh, but yeah, this is how we organized the projects before. And yeah, a student, please uh, create a profile. So some of you have already submitted pull requests and thanks a lot for that. And yeah, uh, if you haven't done it yet, please do. Another thing which I would recommend for community bonding is to actually submit your first pull request. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, it might sound a bit odd because coding starts on the on June 7th, but actually by submitting your first, first pull request, you can evaluate the process, you can check that your environment is okay, you can also uh, start just uh, ramping up in the project, and it doesn't have to be a big pull request, just whatever, and I believe that many projects have newcomer friendly issues published. If not, discuss it with your mentors and start from that because it's again a good opportunity to get up to speed. Okay. Does it work for everyone? I basically summarized uh, all I wanted to tell. Yeah, sorry, it was a long discussion. We don't have, I believe, any rejected students on the call. So for rejected students, I will be following up in the mailing list uh, to save everyone's time. Um, and yeah, so question for anyone. Would you like to discuss something? Would you like to provide any feedback? So do you need any additional information to proceed? I just wanted to say thank you, Oleg, for uh, mm -hmm. giving as an overview what next so from my end um, for those of you who don't know me i will be mentoring together with um jakub and sylvia kubernetes um jenkins operator project so we'll make sure everything is aligned with the with the overall schedule uh, we'll make everything transparent as much as possible um and in case of any questions we'll reach out to you guys so yeah thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you too. Okay. Any other comments, questions? So students have been super silent during this presentation. Uh, yeah, it, again, uh, we can see the US full community members. So as mentors, etc., just feel free to interrupt, ask any questions in any time. So there is no formalities we need to follow. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, if you need any clarification, then just do so. If not, let's just continue. Uh, hi, Oleg. I have a question. 
Yep, sure. Firstly, thank you so much for the presentation. And um, yeah, my question was actually, uh, if you remember uh, one month back, we discussed about changing the name of the project from semantic versioning to uh, conventional comments plugin. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask about that. So uh, I think we have time till 25th of May to update it on the GSpoc website. Uh, I got a email an email regarding that. So uh, yeah. what would be a good way to discuss this with the community and go ahead and make so the changes? Case, if... uh, rename in etc. it's rather matter for the mentoring team. So again, yeah, you do planning, you do adjustments uh, based on whatever discussions you had, based on whatever discoveries you had. So just to discuss it with your mentors and uh, it's enough. If it requires a wider discussion, then feel free to reach out to the Jenkins community, etc. So for example, yeah, if you decide to rename Jenkins uh, Kubernetes operator to something else, I think that it requires wider Jenkins community. But if it's a plugin which I, you are yet to create, I think you can just discuss it with the, the team and uh, start from there. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, comments? So yeah, if you have any questions, again, uh, ask in uh, JSOC Twitter, ask your mailing list, ask uh, your team members, and uh, yeah, all of these approaches will be uh, working fine. Next meeting will be next week, but no need to wait until that. And um, yeah, again, thanks to everyone for joining JSOC. Uh, thanks for joining this meeting. I hope it will be a great experience for you. And uh, yeah. So let's make sure that uh, you also have fun uh, and uh, study something. So thanks all and looking forward to working with you uh, this year. Thank Great. you. Like, Thank you. Thanks, yeah. thanks all. Thank, thank you. So yeah, see you in the chat. Thanks all. Yeah. Bye.